Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Workshop Quick Takes. Thanks for joining us again today. Last week on this channel, we took apart the doors on our 2000 Jeep Cherokee XJ and replaced the latch mechanisms, which include integrated electric locks. Motivation for doing that was one of them had failed completely and the other was stiff with age, so it just made sense for about 70 to $80 per side to replace them. Surprisingly, in spite of being over 20 years old, this vehicle still has front latch assemblies available in the aftermarket. Rear door latch assemblies, however, not so much, so if you need to do something with those, or if you just really want to try and salvage your front ones rather than paying the money, you're going to need to completely take them apart, clean out all the dried out, dirt-filled grease, re-lubricate them, get everything back together. Well, what's it going to take to do that? Also, why do they bind up? Why do they fail? What, what goes on in that mechanism that makes it work the way it does or stop working the way it should? I'm going to take apart a couple of the front ones today. We'll spend most of our time on one side and then pull apart the lock assembly that I previously disassembled from the other and see what's going on in there. And if you do want to try and refurbish one of them, pay close attention to what's going on here because springs are going to pop out and there's going to be miscellaneous parts and pieces that you need to take real good care of as you go. Without further ado, let's turn around to the bench here and see what's happening. Here is the driver's side door latch assembly. And because some of these levers and cams are kind of hard to see down in here, I've added some paint and colored markings. But in order to really see what's going on in here, we will pull this top piece off. This piece here is the door latch for inside the vehicle. When you're sitting in the vehicle and pull the handle, it's this one. If you lock or unlock the door inside the vehicle, it's this one. That's the locked position. That's the unlocked position. These here are the two that go to the outside door hardware. This one is the lock cylinder on the outside of the vehicle. Turning the lock cylinder throws this up and down. So again, locked, unlocked. And then this here is the exterior door button. Let's take a quick look how this works. We're currently unlocked. You are sitting inside the vehicle, and I'll just go ahead and put a door rod in here for fun. And the vehicle, of course, has the door closed. So this lever here, which is kind of U-shaped, is going to go in like that, and that is the fully latched position. You reach for the door handle and pull it, what happens? Well, first of all, see that little red tab coming up to hit that little blue one? That is what is going to open the door. It's going to throw this little whole assembly here, which is spring-loaded down in there, like this. Don't know if you caught it, but the door latch just sprung open there. Let's close the door again and take a look at it from this side. You pull on the door handle. It's open. Okay, so the door is closed. You are sitting inside the vehicle, but the vehicle also happens to be locked. Well, that's this one right here. That throws a mechanism in here that you can't really see until we remove this plate. But note something interesting here. When we pull on the door handle, that is going to come down there and it is going to push the lock open. So that's the safety feature that when you are inside the vehicle, you cannot be locked in. If you reach for the door handle and pull it, this lever is going to come down, it's going to pop the lock open, and then it's still going to allow it to operate. So door closed again, door locked. Once again, you can see it from this side. That's going to swing down. It's going to push on that. It throws the lock open and the door latch releases. Okay, what will be different when you are outside the vehicle? Once again, starting with this latch closed, door is unlocked, you pull on this lever here, so now you're operating the outside push button. Well, you can kind of see something starting to swing up in there, but it's not actually catching it from this side. There is a different mechanism down in here, which we'll have to take this apart to see. But watch what happens down there. And what is happening down in there, this lever is swinging down and actually pushing this rotating mechanism from the opposite side. So when you're inside the vehicle, you're operating the rotating lever from this side, but when you're outside the vehicle, you're operating it from this side. Why? Well, that has to do with how the external lock works. Now the door is locked. Note, we can suddenly see a whole lot more of whatever that is. And this still operates, but now that's playing free and it is not catching the lock for some reason. To see why, we'll pull this plate off next. These are the connections for the lock motor. There's a motor and a gear train drive in here. And this is simply two pins. It's reversible polarity, just like a window motor. Plus on terminal one, minus on terminal two, it travels one direction. Flip that so that you have minus on terminal one and plus on terminal two, it operates the opposite direction. Simple, reliable. The other thing down here is we do have that halfway position so that if you start to close the door, that gets stuck there. The door doesn't finish closing. And now it gets stuck in this position until you either finish closing the door or release the door handle again. We'll see a catch in there that's responsible for that, but that's another safety feature. If you try to open the door, it's always going to open all the way. It assumes you had intent. But if you close the door and you don't apply a lot of gusto to it, it's still going to attempt to latch at that halfway position. 
We are going to release these two screws, but we will not yet pull them out all the way. We just want to remove this top plate and whatever is attached to it. As it happens, these two screws work as dowel pins, so once we fully disengage the threads through to the top piece, we're done. And then, because we have a couple uh, powerful springs locked up in here that are already trying to push this thing apart, we're going to push it back down, like that, and make sure that those are all the way up. So this piece is going to release. That spring there we can remove because it is going to jam up on us. That is normally charging the latch mechanism so it stays in this position here and doesn't just flop. But now you can see the inside of this a little better. What's going on in here? Okay, this piece here, recall, when we operated this, this lock swung back and forth. What was that catching? That was catching on this right here. So this is how this piece is operating from the interior side of the door. Up, down, up, down. And again, that was locked, unlocked, locked, unlocked. Now you can also see the electric lock lever here swinging back and forth. Locked, unlocked, locked, unlocked. Let's go ahead and put a nine volt battery on that real quick just to see it operate. Okay, so that's unlocked polarity. Flipping these around. Locked. Now we're hitting this with a slightly weak 9 volt battery, so it's not operating very quickly. At 12 volts, it just snaps back and forth. Locked position. Unlocked. Locked. Unlocked. Yeah, this battery's so weak that it's jamming up there, but okay. Remember that this lever was coming down and hitting this, so this operates the door latch like that. I just heard it pop. Why does the outside of the door operate differently? The outside of the door is not permitted, for obvious reasons, to free the lock. The lock must allow or block the outside door handle. So the outside door handle in the locked position, let's get a little closer to that and see if we can get a good look at it. Okay, now that we're looking at it up close, this is the normal position for the door latch when the spring is installed. Our lock button is down here. We are currently in the locked position. And watch what happens when we move this. Okay, you see this little thing just flopping back and forth and how we are going past a little tab in there without operating it? Something has to move up in there in order for this lever to operate that tab. And it turns out that something is this little lever which the lock will move into place like that. Now that that is up in there, we have control of the door from the outside button. Just like that. This is going to be tricky because there are a total of four springs in here that I found. Actually, make that three more. Total of five springs. There are three more down inside here. One of them is associated with a little tension button there and a piece of rubber that work together to prevent the door from rattling while it is closed. All right, we're now going to pull these out. We're going to make sure this is in a fully open position. Oops. Just to have the least tension on the springs in there. Okay. Now when I release this, I'm fully expecting a couple springs to come popping out, so I'm going to do it very slowly. There's one of them. There's the other. Okay, looking in the bottom side. If I lift this here out, you see that little hole there? That little thing right there? And you see that little tab coming off of that there? That's how this lever here interfaces with the rest of the latch mechanism in here. When that lever operates, it is simply pulling that little thing up or down. Now normally there's a spring tensioning this, so it always wants to go down. It's only when you press this that you pull it up and then back down again. Why? Okay, this here is the other half of the thing. Both of these are in fact a chunk of steel. They just have the plastic around them as a casing. So if you're looking in the door latch and seeing plastic back there, no, your door is not being held shut with a plastic piece. But it's also supported with a cam lever. So imagine the spring pushing this one up here. Here's where the door gets stuck at the halfway position. It's not going to pop back out. It is in fact held in there just as tightly as if the door was all the way closed. But since the door's not all the way closed, hopefully you're getting a door ajar light or alarm back at the dash. When the door is fully closed, now we're at this position and everything is as it should be. The reason this thing pops open when the door is released is because there's a little spring behind there which popped out, but we'll look at it in a moment. When you pop this up, it's immediately going to snap like this and that allows the door to pop open. Okay, so we've already seen what's going on under here. This in turn has a little spring living down in the channel there and a little nubbin right there that catches it. So to put this back together, what you would normally do, it's probably not going to even want to stay in there, but you normally get that spring just tucked into that channel there, assuming I can even keep it in there. You very carefully get that thing caught right there. And now, once you put your pin through, this piece is normally spring-loaded to pop out automatically. And this in turn is normally up here. It is normally spring-loaded to be pushed down. So as soon as you do that, 
or that. It has to push that out of the way and then it snaps down and locks. I don't have the spring on it, but let's go ahead and put this in here so you can see what's happening. Once you release it, the door opens. All pretty neat. Let's try and break apart this motor assembly and see why this works the way it does. Okay, after tearing further into this, I was able to extract just the uh, motor drive mechanism here. Oh, look at that. For some reason, after swinging out, there's nothing to hold it there, and so I suspect that the amount of resistance it was that it was encountering inside the worn out latching mechanism was allowing it to swing back. Just looking at that, it's not a promising sign that it can fly back that far after it operates. It's almost as though it's not just a stopping, but rather the uh, motor... Oh, look at that. See, I played with it, and now it's not doing that anymore, so something is bonkers in here. So, this is worn out, apparently, and that seems to have been the root of most of the problems. Okay, final piece of the puzzle, maybe. Here's the mechanism that drives this little thing, which in turn was hitched onto this. Okay, so this thing here, when it uh, turned, it was free to turn like this because there's a little uh, mechanism in here. When it was thrown by the gear drive, this thing would hit a stop on the back here. And when it did, it would hit that spring and throw out a little uh, brass piece there. And that brass piece would catch on one of these four and so that would limit the total range of travel. My hunch is that until I uh, played with it, maybe one of those was seized up a bit. Can't tell for sure. So what would happen was, is this motor would turn, and it has a decent amount of momentum, and so all of that twisting force would wind up against the gears and tension everything in there. And so then that tension would want to throw it back out. And this uh, stopping mechanism here was supposed to prevent that. It was uh, supposed to allow all the tension to wind out of the system long enough for the lock or unlock position to stay in place after this little cam gear had thrown the mechanism. So something was probably jammed up in here, and as a result, it was working in one direction but not the other. I don't feel bad about tearing it apart because I really couldn't have gotten to that in a graceful way. I pretty much had to break the case open to even access it in the first place. And besides that, the rest of the mechanism was pretty worn and sticky even after I'd already cleaned and re-lubricated it once. So, it's just plain worn out. It happens. $80 fix, but that's what it takes sometimes. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us again today. Hopefully you found that interesting. I like little mechanical systems like that. I think they're really fascinating. More and more as cars become increasingly all computerized and now we're at the dawn of the EV age. Very few things have those complicated mechanical systems like that anymore. It's almost always just a bunch of little switches and buttons controlling things. But in any case, hope you enjoyed that. Maybe you found it useful. And if you've got a project outside that you've been putting off, what are you waiting for? We just showed you, all it takes is a screwdriver and a willingness to learn something new. So, see you again next time, whenever that is. Has anyone seen my phone?